This is Brian Nexus from the SproutsHearing.com and today we're going to talk about a very much discussed subject on the website and amongst many raw vegans increasingly and that is rejuvalic and fermented seed and nut paste. So what I'll do is um, We'll show you how to make rejuvalic and then we'll show you how to make a um, sunflower, fermented sunflower sprout uh, yogurt. Alright, so we'll get on to the rejuvalic. Now this contains sprouted rye and it's been soaking in water for two and a half days. It should have been only two days but I wanted to keep it for the demonstration today, but never mind. That's the price I pay for trying to show you how to make it. But anyway, you you um, notice the ratio here? It is about a third. That's that's pretty good. You know, you can do 30% to 50% grain and then just fill it up with, with normal filtered water and um, you let sit for two days and you'll notice how I've, I've got this on it and, and a plate on it that keeps um, contamination from dust particles or if someone coughs or sneezes from contaminating it so um, what I'm going to do is Pour it off. Just give it a bit of a stir. Pour it off into the easy jug. And a nice lemony tangy flavour. Absolutely delicious. Mmm, you can smell it too. I wouldn't normally do it outside because uh, particles in the air can, can contaminate it. But it doesn't matter, I wanted to show you how I do it. And I normally do it, I do it strictly in a room with all the windows shut when there's nobody else around and when I store my ferments I store it in another room where no one else enters because we don't want con 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 contamination so basically now I'm just gonna I should be pouring a bit more of, of that off into another bottle but you basically get the drift so what I do is I, I, I would pour off the rest in, in, into the jug. I'll do that now, actually. And then what I do is I fill up this jar for the second time up to there. Instead of leaving it two days, a lot of the fermentation process is happening. So has has, has happened. So just fill it up. Just keep it for a day this time, 24 hours. Then I do the same thing. I pour it off into the jug, store it in the bottle, put it in the refrigerator. Then a third and final time, I fill it up the one last time for 24 hours. I pour it off for the third time in the jug and store it in the bottles. And then I compost it and I ditch the, ditch the, the rest of the, um, of the grain. Now if it's really hot weather like 110 degrees or 100 degrees Fahrenheit you would just, you know, a, a bit over a day sitting in the jug is enough for the rejuvalate. But in the winter, yeah, two days is ideal. So yeah, the, the hotter it is, the shorter the fermentation time. So that's what you do with the rejuvalate. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
show you how I do my fermented seeds. So I'm going to make um, fer fermented sprouted sunflower seed yogurt. It's absolutely delicious. And when it's done properly in good temperature, about 25 degrees Celsius, over two, two and a half days, it'll taste like an apricot um, dairy yogurt. Absolutely delicious. Same as with almonds. Mouth-watering, apricot-tasting yogurt. Same as with fermented, sprouted pumpkin seeds. Beautiful, mouth-watering yogurts. So sesame, different kind of taste. But um, So what I'm going to do, you'll see here, these um, sunflower seeds have um, sprouted over a couple of days. Probably should have done spread them a little bit less than this, but never mind. I'm just showing you how to do it. Look. Put it all in like that. This has got a lot about eight tablespoons of sunflower seeds. It's it's reasonably high fat, but don't forget when you sprout the sunflower seeds for two days, the concentrated fat levels are roughly reduced by about twenty percent. And uh, if you read the, a lot of the peer-reviewed science studies, you'll find that when you have a a diet high in antioxidants that you're going to get a lot of um, antioxidant phytochemicals you're going to get a lot of um, protection against the high fat diet because those um, even though the high fat impedes flow mediated dilatation and, and causes oxidative stress according to the many different studies the um, antioxidant phytochemicals have a, a very powerful, long-lasting effect, which um, which keeps the flow-mediated dilatation to really favourable levels. So it's hardly got any impact on high-fat diet on on the um, functioning of the human body. But I'm not going to get into that science yet. I want to really do a, a long video on the fat and bring up a few dozen peer-reviewed science studies to to, sh to talk about that but for now I'll, I'll just concentrate on some more simple things <clears throat> so that's it doesn't look terribly appetizing like that but believe me that's in a couple of days that's going to make a delicious yogurt um, what you can also do is blend blend the seeds and then put it in the rejuvalic and what will happen is the rejuvalic will actually preserve the, the loss of nutrition um, from the blending you know when it's when it opens up you know you can lose nutrients and things of blending but that's you know that just preserves the integrity of, of the um, nutrition but even better is to avoid the blender altogether do a um, cold press seed paste using a nut butter attachment <coughs> on, <coughs> on, on, on your juicer and um, and then soaking it in rejuvalate and that really you know it opens up the surface area of the um, of the sunflower sprouts it permeates all through a much better yogurt beautiful way to do it but you know do whatever you need to do so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this away from everyone else i would put it either in the cupboard or something where there's no coughs and sneezes contaminating it um, and you minimize your chance of contamination now a lot of people they say oh but Hippocrates Health Institute they had rejuvalic and 60% of the batches were had bad bacteria and all that kind of thing. Oh, you can't be doing that. Well, hang on a minute. Let's not be so hasty about this. There's 
bad bacteria everywhere. There's bad bacteria on the table here. There's bad bacteria in houses and on benches and all kinds of things, right? It's not killing us. What we, we need to put it all into perspective. I'm sure there's probably going to be bad bacteria in here, but the advantages of having these ferments greatly outweigh the disadvantages for the average person with a decent immune system. Ferments have a famous reputation around the world for being incredible health enhancers for very good reason. I'm sure there's bad bacteria in many of those ferments, but the thing is, people's health, immune system is still getting better, regardless of a little bit of bad, bad bacteria. So, um, my experience has been, when I was on the raw food diet, when I, when I started, I was getting black, um, gas, bloating, <clears throat> I couldn't di digest, what I was eating, beans and grains, it was coming out just the same as I had eaten it. You know, same as with green juices, bloating, gas, couldn't digest. And it's not just detox, you know, people who have helped, have, they've been years on raw foods. They're still getting bloating and indigestion from drinking the green juices. And, but when you put them on the rejuvely, or you add it to your green juice and you get them on the fermented seeds and things like that, what happens is that bloating and um, gas and feeling not so good, it goes away. And that's the thing. So what it's doing is um, it is enhancing your digestion because let's look at this. The raw food diet is not necessarily enough on its, by itself to bring the body up to the state where it's going to heal and function at optimal levels. Because we're sick, we need to process our foods often in special ways to be able to get the extra bacteria levels, the probiotic bacteria levels that you're not getting from your fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables give prebiotic bacteria but we need probiotic bacteria as well on, on, on many occasions to be able to finish the job, to be able to bring the digestion up to the level where we can handle the sprout of beans and the sprout of grains and the toxins in the sprouts. If you start having these ferments, you're going to be able to break down the cyanides, you're going to be able to break down the tannins, so you're going to be able to um, get higher zinc and iron bioavailability um, because you're breaking down anti-nutrients in the diet. Your digestion will greatly improve. No more bloating and gas. You'll be able to, it feels like you'll be able to digest a rock after a while. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Now, a real interesting thing also, not very many people know about, is fermented sprouted sunflower seeds contain the elusive vitamin K2. No joking. Also, fermented sprouted aduki beans do. Fermented sprouted black beans do. And of course, um, fermented soy does but this is the king of the foods why I'll tell you because we know sunflower seeds are very high in minerals they're very high in B vitamins but when you sprout the sunflower seeds the B vitamins are going to greatly increase but here's the real exciting bit. When you ferment a very high B vitamin food, you can increase your B vitamins by up to 50%. So you're getting a mega B vitamin food in sunflower seeds. You spread it, you're getting a, a mega, mega B vitamin food. And when you ferment it, you're getting a mega, mega, mega B vitamin food with 
high bioavailable zinc and iron and you bring up the the ratio of, of the zinc and the iron which can be low in vegan diets it just fixes so much you're getting the the, the the K2 you're getting in the organic acids which will break down the toxins which will enhance uptake of minerals you are getting a new virtual nutrition factory when you're doing this this is one of the cornerstones of doing a vegan diet successfully if you're not doing this you're living on the scraps when you're doing this you right the wrongs in the body you get everything working properly you deal with the toxins you get the digestion happening you're getting good bacteria to be able to manufacture the different b vitamins as well probably in in, in the system you know that's how you get your B vitamins and if you really want to give, bring the B vitamin levels to, to the highest level and, and reduce the stress you get the hydrilla green algae major B vitamins you have the hydrilla before you have this wow you are really floating on cloud 10 after you do that and the mind races you feel great fantastic you watch Lou Corona's videos he's saying the same thing the key he's been raw vegan 40 years he could pass for 40 he's 63 he has he says this is one of the cornerstones of being successful on the vegan diet a bit higher fat you need your fatty acids the ferments that's where it's at if you're not doing that pff, you're not doing the vegan diet near what you could be you know, you're just you're just scratching the surface. If you want to eat like a king, you start getting into ferments, and it's all over, Red Rover. That's when you start really coming to the top of your, your game. That's how you got to do it. So that's what I, I wanted to talk to you about. One last um, thing is about the um, the enzymes. This, when you mix. It, with the rejuvalic, you're getting high protease enzymes, high um, lipase enzymes, fat digesting enzymes, and high um, amylase enzymes. So you're getting the whole three macronutrient digesting enzymes. And um, now people are going to say, oh, Brian, you're getting into pseudoscience, you know. That's the old 1968 pseudoscience started by by Professor Watchman, you know, don't buy into that. I say, no, no, no. You've got to read the science because there's a landmark study in the year 2000 by Rothman et al. And, and it was titled, the study, peer review, Conservation of Digestive Enzymes. And what they found in that landmark study was that the food enzymes survive the stomach environment and they permeate various membrane barriers in the body once thought to be impossible by doctors and scientists. And unfortunately, a lot of doctors and scientists are too lazy to read the, the medical and science literature so they don't know this and what they found is these digestive enzymes have been found in various parts of the body once not thought humanly possible and now what they found is the doctors the smarter doctors who are reading the medical studies know this is they found that the digestive enzymes are being used in cancer therapy the food enzymes the thing is that doctors poo poo and talk about the pseudoscience no no not pseudoscience anymore this is peer-reviewed real science and the doctors are using it on cancer patients to re to ease the dramatic symptoms of cancer now we don't know much more about the digestive enzymes 
in the peer-reviewed studies yet. There's lots of fancy theories going around, like Edward Howe's book on enzyme nutrition and that. And I won't believe it, but I'm not going to be talking about that because we haven't done proper conducted studies to prove everything beyond the doubt. We need to be doing that before we can make these big claims. And if we make these big claims of Edward Howe's, we're talking pseudoscience because it's not properly documented. And if you do pseudoscience, pfft, you lose your credibility. So we're going to avoid that. But what we do know is, is these enzymes are working in the body. They're um, helping bodily functioning. So there's something in it. Get your food enzymes. I'm sure in 20 years time, you'll know a whole lot more about them and you'll be glad that you did. So eat the, the um, living food diet, the fermented diets, the green juices, get the enzymes in. I'm sure they're doing fantastic things. We'll find out one day exactly what they are doing. So that's what I wanted to speak about today. Um, I'll just take a break, um, just, just just for a moment, and then we'll wind up this video. Thank you. This is Brian Nexus from the Sproutarian.com. We were just talking about um, the importance of fermented foods in, in the diet and rejuvalic and um, fermenting nut and, and seed paste as um, a staple in the diet. Um, just just two words of caution, um, you don't really want to be fermenting sprouted chia or, fer or, or fermented flax seeds. It just doesn't taste so good and it just doesn't really take the fermentation because of the, um, the gel in, in the seeds. Now another really important point is you don't want to be fermenting your food, all your food, because there's aldehydes in the ferments and that can block vitamin B1 absorption and, and it can cause problems. Personally, I did a 100% heavily acid fermented diet for four months straight and I got nothing but the fantastic results. But look, I was doing a lot of different things in the diet to protect against that. But I just don't recommend, you know, you just got to be careful what you're doing. Aldehydes are an issue. You know, you maybe want to do ferments four to five times a week, you know, no more than that. Um, the clear, if, you, if you're going to be doing that level of ferments, to clear out the aldehydes, drink lots of water in, um, in, in the morning, um, you got to have high cysteine foods, that's the amino acid, which are in nuts and grains and seeds anyway, and you just <clears throat> have a few, you know, a couple of days off at least, from the ferments, so you just give your body a break, lots of water, you, you should be fine. So that's Brian Nexus from the Sproutarian.com. Uh, I hope you, you found this video um, informative. Um, the ferments are a cornerstone to doing a vegan diet to a, a very high level, and I highly recommend you all that you do them. And as for this, just one last comment I wanted to make was about this ferments being highly acid in this this acid alkaline diet theory um, it's actually the, the peer-reviewed science is going against that old theory and, and I mixed up my scientists earlier it was actually Watchman in 1968 which brought this this alkaline acid diet theory to the public um, it's now been thoroughly debunked by proper medical science I will bring that issue up with um, on video an, another day and I will be presenting um, the science on my website of, of this and time. I've got about a hundred pages of notes that I've got to sort out on this. So, um, But we'll deal with that at, at the time. But don't buy too much into this acid alkaline thing. But we'll, we'll, we will talk more about that. Um, I suggest you if you want to find out a bit about it now, go to um, Google on um, YouTube Acid Alkaline Myth and you'll see this fellow, Dr. James Sloan, he talks about it. Read the comments there and he goes into 
some of these different things. But I'll back up what I say by proper thorough science for about 50 reference studies and you'll see that things will start to reveal that you know all this pseudoscience we're talking about. So <clears throat> it's Brian Nixus from the Spiritarian.com. Um, thank you very much.